Hey y'all, welcome to our higher session for the week. I know it's Monday and we usually on here on Wednesday, but we got something to do on Wednesday, so we give y'all the session on Monday instead. And today is gonna be a special episode. So specifically, we wanted to, you know, reach out to educators and kind of like give them some tips and like some youth advice straight from us on how to help us with our mental health and just kind of mend that bond better with teachers and students. So that's overall, <laughs> my bad, from the, I'll be trying to look at the chat, but that's overall what we want to talk about today. Wait for Sid to jump on and then we're going to get started. So just going to say hey to everybody in the chat. I'm going to see Sane, see Santana, I see Donovan, see Daniel, I'm not sure if that's a hard beat or if that's an educator. So we we gonna figure that out in a minute when Sid get here. Everybody gonna tell us what they here for. I see Jayla. I see Antonio. Hey yo yo. Hey Zion. So so we gonna get started. But first, just like tell me how y'all doing today. I know today for me was stressful. It was a lot ups and downs. I woke up late. So I wasn't late for school, but I just woke up late. So it was kind of like a rough start for Monday. Um, had some issues in school with my teacher. She had like a medical issue like in mid-class. So that was like traumatizing. So went through that earlier. And then kind of like the rest of my day after that was like dealing with what happened with my teacher and then like just lunch and stuff and then like doing some extra work and stuff. So everything was... It was, it was okay. It was an okay thing. Okay, so Mr. Daniel Wise. Okay, you're educated. <laughs> That's good. Saint says she's doing good, but she's tired. I definitely can relate. Um, I'm tired. We coming to school, burn out. <laughs> but y'all, let me see where... Oh, they go see it. I'm just afraid to talk to What's up, y'all? Y'all hear me? Can you hear me, Jim? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, uh, yeah. My computer volume is down. Wait there, y'all. So as Gemma said, we want to be talking about mental health um, and how pretty much teachers can help with students after, you know, going through COVID and being in a pandemic and virtual learning and just being able to still be successful afterwards now. So we want to provide y'all with some tips. We're going to be actually having a conversation. This isn't a presentation. This isn't a lecture. This is a conversation on how Teachers can make the learning environment better for us now that we've all experienced a very different change in environment. All right, so at the X, everybody, how they was doing. Your day-to-day -day is different, but overall, we just want to start with, like, our first question. So just how has everybody's mental health been, you know, taking into consideration, like, school and all of that? So just, like, overall, how you are doing mentally? Um be honest or share as much as you're comfortable with. Y'all know this space. It's our, our regular hire session. So just tell us how your your mental health been lately. I have I've been I've been okay. I'm definitely not gonna say I've been depressed or nothing like that. Just been like slightly stressed with like trying to get my schedule back straight for November. Cause October was hectic and then November came and was like, yeah, I'm hectic too. So it was like <laughs> get it together. So I thought I had a break, but I did. So just got to get my schedule together for November. But overall, I'm good. Really happy. Been doing my own like free time, my self-care and all of that. So that's been good. So mentally, I'm, I'm good. Oh, I said her mental health is horrible. We got to help you with that. Pam said her college has been doing a good job of helping with our mental health. Yeah. Santana said it's not where she wants to be, but she'll get through it. Okay, Cam said they got what? counseling, meditation, and session and meditation sessions. Okay, probably need to have like a whole nice. meditation session, like for the whole school. They just need to announce an announcement. Meditation session starting now for 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 twenty minutes. <laughs> no, seriously. But um, while they're putting more in the chat, uh, my mental health has I've had to read it. It it has been a seven out of ten. Like. October was probably my busiest month I've had in a long time, like something every single day, multiple things a day. And I'm really proud of myself of how I handled all of that and stayed on top of everything, on top of getting really, really good grades for the for, uh, first quarter. So now it's like when I kind of slow down a little bit for November, I'm able to like regroup myself, still gonna be busy. So I'm currently, before getting on here, I was just uh, 
working on like my October uh, calendar and the stuff I have coming up. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Thank you for all the opportunities I had. Looking forward to Thanksgiving. Like I think Thanksgiving is just good for me as well. Like just knowing that I just look forward to that one day just to sit around and eat all day and see family. I think that's just what's going to make the highlight of my month. So my mental health has been good so far. Hopefully we keep it up because I ain't going to lie. I'd be scared when it be too good for too long because it's like something is bound to happen. That's going to be so terrible. That's really going to knock it out the park. So I'm just really, really praying that it stays the way it has been. The work will stay the way it's been. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I've been kind of in like a Hakuna Matata state of mind. Like I ain't been stressing the things I should stress over, like school tests and things like that. I just be like, listen, y'all taught it to me. I know what I know. What I don't know, I don't know. So I'm going to take this test. I'm going to try my best. But if I don't get the best score, then I'll just see what I can do afterwards. Like, I don't be stressed about that stuff no more. But um, in the comments, let's see what else. Zion said hers is okay right now. Donovan said he's doing better than what he was at at the beginning of the school year. I'm glad to hear that, Donovan. And I can definitely relate. Like, Coming back to the school year after being virtual for like a year was just definitely a whole game changer. It was just like I was never in person in the first place, like just stressed out, anxiety through. And I don't have anxiety. Like I don't have social anxiety. But like just now, like coming back and just having the experiences all over again, like it's the first time feeling like a freshman when I'm really a junior, like everything is just so different for me. Um, Zion, why is your mental health only okay? And Cam said she can't wait for Thanksgiving either. Cam, I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to go ahead and start hitting the gym now for what I'm about to put on this month. Yeah, that, that definitely be the thing, though, Cam. Just making sure, like, you talk to your teachers so you can have the best system for success. One little conversation of fix your grades. I'm trying to tell you, you can go from a D to an A in one day if you just have a conversation with your teacher and just, like, let them know what's up. Depending on the teacher, sometimes... Every teacher is different. I'm just going to say that. Every teacher is just different. So that looks like that was pretty much everybody. Y'all know y'all still, like, welcome to share stuff in the chat if, like, something else do come up. But um, we're going to move into our questions. So for the educators that are on here, if you could just, like, make a quick uh, comment in the chat and just, like, identify that you're an educator so we can address you right. Uh, we already know who the who the youth is. But, like, if you're new on here and you want to just say hey or something, you can do that, but just let us know if you're an educator, and if you are, can you answer the question of what questions like do you have for the youth so that we can get them answered, or just like anything that you maybe be like been having troubles with, like as a teacher that you would like youth advice on that we can help you with. So y'all can put that in the chat as educators, and then once we get some of those, we're gonna move on to what what, what y'all gotta say. The youth, of course. <laughs> Um, Cam said they got a writing center in college and office hours with teachers, so use those to my best of my abilities. Yeah, we got, I know, like, teachers still have, like, coach classes and stuff, like, after school, but I be having work after school, so my advisory period is, like, 10 out of 10, sometimes. Sometimes it's irky, but it's definitely that time for me to, like, go talk to teachers, be running around the whole building, making sure I talk to all my teachers, make sure I got everything straight or I'm not missing work or I'm making up stuff. So that's definitely like a plus having that time like set off in a week, like how we used to have when we was in person the first time, like pre-COVID, like with enhancement and all of that. But it's like more. So it's like every other day. So that's like kind of a little bit more helpful than enhancement because enhancement was one day in a week and it was Wednesday. So it's just like if you missed that Wednesday, that was it. So now it's kind of like you got more like options to like go see different teachers on different days or whatever like that. So it's definitely like a lot of extra time we get to like do work and like kind of just like or just had that time to like decompress while we in school so that's good too yeah i'm gonna add on to what you just said to them i ain't gonna lie first week of school when we had um advisory i'm like oh this is sweet like i'm just taking a nap in here every time we had this this little period not to do nothing my advisory teacher because i think they sent out lessons for advisory classes like I don't know, like maybe leadership or like team building exercises and stuff. But my advisory teacher, he don't make us do none of that. So we just sit in there, just come in there and do whatever we feel. But um, first week of school, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to just chill. Second week of school, I'm like, oh, I got a few work to do. Every now was like, listen, I, I'm going to use this, this this period to get my work done and to do what I need to do. And like, that's, that's what comes like with the time management. 
like in the, in the making sure you're prioritizing your stuff. Like I want to make sure I have more free time at home so I can be able to make time for other things. Like that's how I balance my environment. Like I'm, I'm going to do work here in school so I don't have as much as work to do at home. And at home I can focus on more personal things, more family things and, you know, my goals and things like that. Like I try to keep that separation. But I'm sorry, y'all. My camera just keep falling. I have to change this. But yeah, like a lot of a lot of people do come right in that free period and just sit down and you know sit there for that mental health. Even if they just scroll on social media for the past hour, you know, everybody got their different things they do. But I use that time to really just get some work done. Cause I don't know why, but like I find breaks in the smallest things. Like I tell myself, well, I'm gonna get this work done in this free period because I know me and Jimmy, we got that 30 minute ride home after school where we don't really, we're not really gonna do nothing. So that's my break. So right now I'm gonna put in the work. But um, I definitely think there could be some like mental health rituals incorporated into that advisory period. Like Cam just said, they got meditation classes and stuff. Yeah, Spellman, like I know that's right. Just wait, if Ms. Joni get to come in advisory in school and get to talk to the kids about leadership, can you imagine how many leaders we would have? Like, I always tell people about her smiles through word of mouth, but coming from Ms. Joni is just a different experience. Like, it's like no other. You know, she, you know how Ms. Joni talks. She talked like with that emphasis, like, yo, yo, I'm trying to tell you, heart smiles. This is where said. This is where you build your foundational skills for the leadership and all of that. So I was like, nobody can do it as good as her. So. I really feel like we need more people like Ms. Jones to come in there, though, because I feel like that would improve the mental health overall of the students if they knew it was something more out here than school and grades and tests and quizzes and stuff like that. Help them find their own purpose. But that could just be me. Yeah, I definitely agree, Sid. It's not you. You can tell somebody like all you want about her smiles, but until they like actually hear from Ms. Joni, they're not really gonna like feel it. I like I don't know what it be like. I tell them. I run down the whole list and they still just be like, uh, I be like, all right, you you had to hear me Johnny for yourself and it still don't come on a Wednesday. That's why I, I guess that when people be like put me on and I'll be like, all right, come come to this, and then they don't even show up. I'll be like, all right, I'm not, I'm not putting nobody else on. <laughs> Y'all terrible. Um Rosaria, she said her mental health is way off. So we we definitely gotta we definitely gotta address that. Cause I've only seen you said that twice. So Think, think about what's exactly like making your mental health off so we can try to help you out with that. But I didn't see no educators in the chat, so I don't I don't know what's up with y'all teachers or where they at. I just shared the post and emailed it out and sent it to teachers. I don't know where they at. We, we can't force nobody to come, but we still want to have a good conversation about educators and students and all that. So um, moving on to the next question. What's our next question, Sid? Because I think I asked the first one. Our next question is, what can teachers do to tend to students more when it comes to mental health and other things they may need? I want to start off with this one. First of all, I don't know about y'all, but my teachers in school, especially since we came back from the um, pandemic, they've been way more lenient. That has been a big help. Like, I know we come on here and we talk about a lot of things that teachers don't do, but speaking from my new experience, like, teachers have been way more lenient with grades and um, just like the deadlines for works and things like that, because they know everybody got other stuff going on, but I felt like that should have been a thing, you know? But, um, so when it comes to attending the students, like, I feel like they, first of all, they need to understand everyone's situation is different. So, you know, like like Gemma said earlier, like everybody, you, she work at the school, Every people work at the school, gotta take care of their siblings, gotta have different responsibilities that other students don't have. So I feel like some deadlines and some things just don't work for everybody. Especially if you go to a school that is constantly giving you work from, like I know for me and Gemma, we have eight classes and I mean, they all love giving homework. So if you all giving homework, y'all all wanna do on the same day, it's like, what is that doing for us? What is that doing for our mental health? How is that having an impact on us? How is that having an impact on our family? Like, it's been times where my mother needs help with something and I can't really get up from my computer because I have two hours worth of homework, you know? She's like, well, Sydney, I need help. I need you to come do the dishes. Well, I need you to come help me clean something. And I'm like, well, Ma, you know, I got homework right now. I can't really help you right now. You know, stuff like that is what they don't consider when they're giving homework out in school. They just giving it to you and expect me to turn it in whenever they, you know, they see you turn it in. And it's like, it can't be like that because that's why a lot of things happen in school. That's why. A lot of people end up dropping out because it becomes too much. A lot of people just don't participate in, in class. They're not engaged. They don't know what's going on. They wasn't able to read eight chapters in two days that you asked them to read because they had other stuff, important pressing issues going on in that family. Like certain stuff, like I don't think teachers really consider when it comes to handing out work. 
it's like only a handful of teachers that actually pull you aside and be like, you know, what's up with you? Um, I noticed that you wasn't really talking as much as you usually do in class. Um, I know you missed the last five assignments I put out. Is there anything I can do to help? Like only a handful of teachers really do that. And that's really sad. And I want to see more of it. Um, yeah, just I think a lot of teachers, like, I feel like overall, like the school system in general has just felt like mental health has just become an issue within students after that pandemic, like it already wasn't an issue beforehand. And I think because of the lack of education that a lot of people in the school system who are like higher ups, the lack of education they have on mental health causes for the lack of like care for our mental health students. So I think overall that's like a, a bigger issue, like before COVID and all of that, like even after the pandemic, like not after the pandemic, it was kind of like still in one, but like coming back in person, like of course it's an issue now and kind of like a more bigger issue because we haven't been in school for a year, but it was an issue like before then. So they kind of like aggravate me now, like with this social emotional learning that should have been in place from the start of the school system, how y'all just implementing it now just like shows that like y'all just doing it because COVID happened and they probably told y'all to do it. So just like all of that, it just don't feel genuine or like they really care. Just more like, oh yeah, this is protocol. So we're going to check in with you every month because they said we had to, you know, do attack that social emotional learning. So that's what they feel like with a lot of teachers, some of them are like, they really do genuinely care about your mental health and what you're doing outside of school and how your workload is and things like that. And they don't want to overwhelm you. So a lot of my teachers, all, all of my teachers are pretty genuine about actually caring about my mental health and just like overall the whole classes and they're just being like really patient with us um, and like trying to build those bonds with us. So I have a good set of teachers, but I know people who don't have a good set of teachers. So sometimes not every teacher is different and you might not be a bad teacher. You might can teach a certain group of, uh, a certain group of students, but everybody learns a different way. So you got to be versatile. You got to be able to attack, you know, different students and be able to make sure that everybody gets that, that lesson down pat or make sure everybody feels comfortable and everybody is okay all at once. So being a teacher is definitely a, a harder job than what most people think. You kind of like your parent, your therapist, your, your counselor, your teacher, your doctor. It's kind of like you all these things under just one like teaching title. So I definitely do like understand the stress that teachers do like go through and undertake like throughout the school year as well. So they, they be stressed out too, y'all. So like check up on your teachers, send them an email, like just show like your appreciation. They always like really, um, really appreciate that you actually like are learning from them or that you are taking, that you're grateful for the things that they're doing to make sure that you're okay. So check up on your teachers too, because <laughs> they, they, they deal with a lot too. Like sometimes it don't even be the teachers, it'd be the people that's above them that's not really teaching any students that be having it all messed up. But I know one of my teachers, the Powell, uh, my physics teacher, the way that he teaches, like far as the homework situation, we haven't had a homework from assignment from him all year yet. But I know everything in his class, pass all his tests, do all the work right. I understand everything right in physics, and I never thought I'd be able to understand nothing like that because physics just sound hard. But I understand everything. The class is like really good as far as like pace. And all of that, he's a really good teacher. And I really think it's because of the way that he teaches and because he's not assigning homework. So because I'm learning everything that I need to learn in class, I'm not stressed about it when I go home. So when I come back, I'm having more fun in class because I'm actually learning. I'm learning everything in school. But I feel like that's what the seven hours is for. If you can't get the whole lesson in that 90 minutes that we got now at, at Poly, then you, you're doing something wrong. There's no way you should be assigning homework. Now, if it was 45 minute classes, I understand that you might feel like you can't get your lesson through. So you want to make sure that the students got some extra work to do at home to make sure that they understand it. What they do, I get that. But I feel like when teachers have that like long class period of time, that you should be able to make sure that your students are getting what they need to get to get the grades that they need to get. So I know in my A push class. I love my teacher, but <laughs> he's a lecturer, so I don't learn much in that 90-minute class period. It's just kind of like him talking, and he like, well, the notes is posted, so I feel like I ain't got to take notes because they posted, so I can just look over them later. So I'm not really paying attention. I'm kind of like disconnected, and I'm just like, 
I'm just there for the fun of it. Everybody sleep. I'm like, well, I might as well go to sleep too. There ain't nobody else paying attention. If 95% of the class sleep and I'm the only person up, I'm going to go to sleep too. Why not? So just like those things are like really important, making sure that like teachers have like activities throughout the day to like touch different students. So a video or maybe a worksheet or like group activity that's like colorful or something like that that got students moving around. That helps me remember different things. I know my math teacher, she had us do like this like game where like you did the equation on here and then you wrote down the equation under the flap and then found the answer for it. I don't know, but it it it, it was good enough for me to remember the techniques and the different ways to figure out the whatever whatever we was doing in math, to figure it out. And because we did that game, I always remember it that when I'm doing those different problems that I know how to do them in those different ways that she taught us how to. So different things make different learning skills stick with different students. So a video might stick with majority of your class, but you also got to have like those physical like writing activities and like hands on things that touch your other students. So just making sure like you really had that diversity as far as like learning and all of that within your class is like just really important. And then it kind of like eliminates the process of homework because at home you're by yourself. So it's like you're kind of like teaching yourself, but that practice is always kind of needed. So I understand that. But if you set a good foundation within your class during your class period in school, the homework is not really necessary. And students will be able to actually build off of what you're teaching them in class by the time the next class comes instead of you giving them something new and homework and then trying to build on something different that was different from the homework when they come back to class. So definitely think that establishing that good, firm foundation in school, in class, with the students, all while we're here, is better than just like assigning homework and expecting students to come back with it done and perfected. Yeah, I would like to add on to what Jim has said. And I'm going to start with the teacher appreciation. I just want to let people, like teachers, instructors, because they might not be on here right now, but that doesn't mean they won't click on this video, you know, or be lurking on Majoni. YouTube a little after this after this is put up, but I just want to say like don't be scared to take those extra steps when it comes to attending and students. A prime example, my art teacher, his name is Mr. Adelberg. He has been so supportive since day one, and he takes extra extra steps to make sure that our mental health is catered to and that we're comfortable in his class. He has a whole hookup in the back of his classroom um, with a coffee maker and a tea maker. He got tea bags, mugs. I mean, he, he don't let, like make you use them. He say, I encourage you to bring your own because I know COVID is going around. But he says every day in class, please feel free to, you know, go in the back and make you some tea or some coffee at any point during my class because I know it might get, you know, tiring trying to, you know, stay here and sit down for the full 90 minutes of class. Or he puts on music with, uh, um, the regarding, or what is that I say? He puts on music about, he, put, he puts music on based on who, whoever recommended it. Like he asked which one to listen to, he put on rap music, hip hop music, you know, classical music, whoever everybody asks, you know, he made a gold pole. Who, who wants to who wants listen to this, who wants to listen to that? He put on music going throughout the work, um, working time. He lets us listen to our personal music. Like I never understood why some teachers don't really allow, you know, students to listen to their own personal music. Like I'm one of the students that needs music to function. Like if I'm working on something that requires a lot of skills and a lot of thought, I need some music playing in my head. Also, I'm be talking to myself the whole time and not really paying attention to you know what I'm doing. So just things like that that you need to consider. Um, also, he his classroom is just a a space for everyone. It doesn't even have to be a student of his. If you bring your friend and say, "Hey, we, we want to sit in here for lunch," he'll let you do that as well. And you know he's even put he even put himself at risk. Like he's been doing this since the first day of school, and he actually caught COVID like about two, three weeks ago. He caught a bad case of it too. Like he was out of school about two weeks after that because, you know, he took that extra step and he made that risk to like, you know, students come into his space and, you know, use his space however they want it. And I'm not saying every teacher has to do that because I know everyone is comfortable with different things. Like I have some teachers, like my English teacher, who was putting us out the minute the bell rang for lunch. Like y'all can't stay here. Like I, this is my time. This is me time. This is my time. I want to sit in by myself. He teach out like the students be like, oh, can I stay here? I'm supposed to lunch only 20 minutes. We just want to stay here. And it's up to work is where you know y'all gotta get out. So, you know, every teacher not gonna do the same thing, but just just it's different ways to show that, you know, you care about your students. Another thing that I wanted to touch on is how mental health has become like a trend, especially since the pandemic. Like Gemma said, mental health has been a thing. It's just been more emphasized since the pandemic has been a thing. I never understood why, you know. The schools wait until someone commits suicide to say, oh, there are resources. Please go see 
your guidance counselor for help if you, you're feeling sad today. I was feeling sad before it happened. I mean, no offense, but I was feeling sad every day before that. Why you wait till somebody care that so? Because of the workload, instead of just listening to us and joining these lives and listening to what the youth got to say about this, this stuff that y'all doing, you know, that could prevent stuff like that from happening in the future. But then y'all just want to make an announcement. Oh, so sad, the tragedy of the student. Please go see your guidance counselor for help. That Why? Why do that? Is anything going to change? Is y'all going to listen? Is y'all going to join these conversations? Because I don't understand, like, why right now it's five youth watching and they're only youth. You know, like, what? how are we supposed to change these these toxic practices and things that are not helping for, the, for our mental health in, in school if none of the instructors or educators are here to even listen? Gemma said she emailed them out and shared the resources whoever she could. We've both been reposting it. And it's only youth listening. I don't understand that. But, you know, we're not going to get into that. But I just wanted to touch on that. Um... I really need like more of these conversations. I need we need more youth to have these conversations. We need these conversations in school, like where the, when they have professional development days and all the teachers gather around and talk about how to grade for the. They need to be youth there, like you know we need to be there. Like listen, what you did that last time didn't work for us. That DBQ AP US History Study Guide that's twelve pages long that nobody did in your class. That needs to be stopped because it's taking a toll on everyone's mental health. No one is able to get any other other work done in any of their other classes because the study guide that you assigned is too long. You know, we need to be there to say them those things. We just need those opportunities. So it's like I feel like youth, we just all need to come together, honestly. Like we all go to different schools, but I feel like enough of us can make the change if we really persistent and we really have more of these conversations. So that's what I wanted to say. But leading into our new topic strengthening bonds with students how teachers can strengthen bonds with students so i've been talking for the last five minutes i'm gonna let Gemma go and she can add on anything if she had anything to add on from what i just said but now we're talking about how teachers can strengthen bonds within students this is a good one go ahead Jim. um so i think what i was ready to say actually ties into like with answering the question so the incident that i had my dance teacher today with uh her physical health and all of that, um, it was like really traumatic. The ambulance had to come. Like it was just a lot for our whole class to see. So Mr. Uh Mr. Edelberg, uh, Mr. A, that's what I call him because his name just this is too long. I always wind up calling teachers like short names. But uh Mr. A, he came down, he made sure we was all okay. Like they was checking in with us because we was just like a mess. Everybody was crying. It was just like it, it was a lot, it was really heavy. So Mr. A, he came and got us. He took us to his classroom. Um, I didn't even know we had like a school psychiatrist that like was like actually in the school. Like I did not know this lady when they came in and she was like, hey, I'm a psychiatrist. I'm just like, who is this lady? Because I know she's not a counselor. So I was like, who is this? So uh, we we met her and stuff. And it was just, um, it was some support there for us in his room. And he let us know about like, like Cindy was saying, his little station in the back. Everybody had like a cup of tea or something. I know I had some hot chocolate. We went and got our lunch and stuff and came back up to his classroom eight. After everybody kind of like calmed down and we felt a lot better because her we got an update on her. She's like doing good now and all of that. So that was good to hear. So that like that calmed us down. We was like, all right, we feel a whole lot better now. So everybody was a lot more happier. We was in there, we was chilling, he was talking to us, he was cracking jokes, we was talking about how stubborn uh our teacher was and all of that. So it was just all cool. He was like really, it was really confident and all of that. So um overall. Mr. A made it a lot better. So because of that, we all got a bond with him now. If we can come to his classroom, even though I don't have it, like we don't take his class because we take uh, another fine art class, we don't have him. So being the, the first time most of us are meeting him, it was like, it was really welcoming and it made us actually one of our teachers. That's just like one of the things that can you know, build that bond between like teachers and students, like just you saying hi to students or something like that. Like if you come across a student, they should like nine times out of 10, like it should be a positive like outcome of your conversation and whatnot. Yeah, Jim, I definitely agree. And that's crazy. I didn't know nothing about your dance teacher um getting hurt today. I, I didn't know nothing about that. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, nobody ever about it. it. Um, I don't, I don't want to put our business out there, but she was just having, like, um, some problems, like, breathing, and, and, like, she was on the floor and things like that, and it was just, it was just, like, really traumatic, like, um, 
she was seizing up and stuff like that. So we just like was just like standing there watching her and we couldn't really help. So but we finally got some help, Mr. Tompkins. Mr. Thompson came in definitely a lot and I'm just like crying because we didn't know if she was gonna be okay or not. But like she she's fully good now. Like she's up and and all that, so she, it does that time. A lot of people, especially in the experiences with other teachers and stuff like that, in front of us. Start on the class, but hey, Jim, you skipping up a little bit. I ain't gonna lie, I don't, you skipping up. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got time. <laughs> just, just, just keep it pushing. But I think it's something but, else. Um, uh, I can't. Oh, another teacher, uh, like Miss, she came with one of my, my history classes, and I love Miss Frazier now, and she not even my teacher. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead. This lady teach me ever a day in my life because of the class that she teach. So it's just like, I just make it bonds really easy. Like, it's like really, easy. and you're not gonna have. As a student, you're not gonna have a teacher in the school building or even every teacher that you have. But as long as you have like a couple of, you should have more than one. You should have at least more than one teacher at your school. <laughs> That's just that. Or oh, something wrong with the teachers at your school? Because the student, their teachers, they see students all day, every day. You might like a couple of your teachers. Your teachers might not like. It's just with. All right, y'all. Jimmo was Jimmo was skipping out, so I'm gonna wait till she joined back. But um, I'm gonna keep it going. So basically, like I've had so many different experiences with teachers when they're not like acknowledging the fact that you know my mental health is off or that something isn't right. Like especially during the virtual world, like I I found it very uh crazy that a lot of teachers weren't very sensitive to the situation that we were in. Like as an example, my French teacher, um, he was automatically naturally everyone knows him for being a butthole anyway but you know it's just like you would think that under certain circumstances that some teachers would be less like that so like as an example you know this was one of the teachers that did the absolute most during a virtual uh setting oh i need your camera on da -da -da, i'm gonna put you out if your camera not on da -da -da, like all oh, that calling on your name to make sure you you're um participating and things like that like just one of those type of teachers so usually every day in his class he would call on a student to basically answer like a warm-up question randomly and if you didn't answer he would like take off your um he would take off your, your participation point whatever and usually like i'm very active in his class i'm answering it you know i don't listen y'all i do not speak french but i when i say i was trying so hard i'd be speaking french he'll correct me cool i get over it but this particular week it was a lot going on in my household. I'm trying to juggle 15 different things at once, you know, and like my mind not really in the class setting. I'm not really paying attention. I'm not really interacting, none of that. So he's calling my name. I'm not really saying anything because it's like, I'm, I got other stuff on my mind right now. So he basically like tried to put me out there like, Oh, Miss Johnson, this is your third time I didn't call on you. You're not answering. I want to speak to you after class. Da, 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 all this, all this crazy crap. And I'm like, whoa! Like, since when we do this? Like, you don't know what's going on. Like, whole time, my mother just had a stroke. You feel me? Like, I'm in here going crazy. Like, I'm trying to take in my sister. I'm trying to help pack her bag for the hospital. I got, I got my AirPods, and I'm listening to his class as I'm walking around the house and trying to get stuff together and take it to my father so we can bring it to the hospital. I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot. He, and I'm, in my ear, I'm listening to him call me up like, Miss Johnson, I've been calling on you for the last blah, 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 blah. I'm like really dragging me. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So, you know, I had to get on there and just be like, listen, respectfully, Dr. Dr. Parker, I'm not, I'm not like, don't, don't play with me today. Like not today. I'm a respectful student. I'm normally participating in your class. I would much rather appreciate you. Pull me aside next time. Maybe send me a direct message rather than put me out on the spot in front of the class. You don't know what's going on in my house. You don't know what's going on in anyone's house. So I would appreciate if you would just not do that in the future. Of course he took it as being disrespectful because you know, I'm, I'm a young child or whatever the case might be. But I said what I had to say. He still wanted to talk to me after class. And I basically told him like, listen, I got a lot going on right now, and right now I'm not gonna lie. Like participating in your warm ups is not my priority. 
I will make that stuff up later on. But right now, I have other stuff that's pressing in my household. So it's just like things like that that some teachers don't consider. Like it's just been so many different times. Like I don't, I don't really understand. Like some teachers before COVID, I remember like um, this kid in my elementary class. They will, they will always bring these big boxes of uh, breakfast, and you know they would pass them out and stuff. And one kid would like always take more than one, and he'd be eating them throughout the class and things like that. And you know people would talk about them, especially the teachers on normal eating in my class. You you ate two, three of them. They don't know that boy. They didn't know he 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 didn't eat last night. They didn't know he had no food to wake up to this morning. So it's just like certain things teachers need to be more aware of when it comes to kids. And it's, instead of bashing them and feel bad about being less participant, you know, participating less than they usually do or showing up less than they usually do, it's okay to pull them aside and ask them what's wrong. You know, sometimes like we go through a lot as teenagers. Like people think just because you're not old and you don't got bills that you're not stressed out that you ain't going through stuff. And that that's a that's a a mental pattern that needs to get rid of, like that needs to go away. Like adults, what you stressed out about? You don't want your own work. You don't gotta do that. Like what you mean? What I'm stressed out about? I got other stuff going on in my head. Just because I don't pay bills don't mean that I don't got other stuff going on. Don't mean I'm not you know dealing with different things every day in school. Don't mean I'm not facing peer pressure. Don't mean I haven't you know been sexually assaulted. It's like just different things. Like people don't really take into consideration. They just automatically think when they see you, your child, you're young. Go be free. Go, da, 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 live, laugh, love. No, like we are people and we go through stuff. So if teachers understood that more then I think stuff will be so much better. Jim, you back? Say something so I can have your internet good. Can you hear me? Yeah, much better. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I, don't, I need my own Wi-Fi box at this point because I got about 15 different devices. But um, just like uh, touching on what Sid said, I definitely think that if they just like looked into students a little bit more and like touching on like their human thing. Like Mr. A says earlier, but like, he was like, I'm giving y'all this space so y'all can actually be like human beings or whatever. So I think they're actually like remembering that students are human and we have the same emotions as y'all. We experience sometimes the same amount of stress, if not more as teachers and adults and educators. So just making sure that you remember that your students are human. Like, yes, we're students. Woohoo, we 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 the we the the, the papers that y'all grade and, and all of that. But you know, we also have feelings and we also do other things. It are it is some students who actually do pay bills. Like I know people who are actively like having to help pay bills or are paying all of the bills in their household because their parents cannot. So sometimes kids are paying bills. And as a kid, I would like you to imagine you paying bills if you haven't paid bills as a kid. So Things like that are, are a lot to consider. So it just kind of like burns me up when like certain adults say, oh, like, well, well you don't, don't pay bills or you don't this and you don't do that. And then as soon as they say it, I think about 15 different people who are exactly doing those things that they just said kids don't do. So I just be like blown when they think like that we only can do two things, which is be too grown or get good grades. So it's just like, this is like all of that is just like really aggravating. But um, moving into the next question, which is identifying when a student is struggling with mental health. Um, a big thing that was like a really big eye opener for me, and I know probably like a lot of people in higher, was that uh, depression can come in like different forms, and that anger is a like is also a big sign of depression, especially like within the black community. And within Baltimore City public school systems and within black young men and black young women and all of that, that is really more common for a lot of us to display more symptoms of depression through anger and like frustration and and all of that. So rather than like just sadness or just like being down and or like um, disconnected. So it's just a lot more common for youth in the black community just to display like more acts of violence or what they're surrounded by as a sign of their depression. And often schools just look at that as bad behavior. So they feel like, oh, oh, she, she ranting, raving, or he doing this and she doing that. And they just so angry. So we, we gonna suspend them because they're causing just too much turmoil. We're not gonna look into it. You know, we just gonna suspend this child. Then they need some time home. And then they come back and the child is still doing the same thing. Because the issues are nine times out of ten at home or at school, and the student is never getting any attention about 
or being asked like, hey, what's wrong? Why, 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 why are you so angry? Why are you fighting two people every week? Why are you fighting somebody every day? Why are you always in a fight more, more, more than people who actually professionally fight? So it's just like things like that uh, need to be asked and need to be like actually like looked into. Look into if the kids' parents are currently experiencing a divorce or they just lost an aunt or if or if any anything, anything, a family member has been hospitalized or anything like that could be happening in their child's life that is affecting them that bad that they're in a, a serious episode of depression, but they're not displaying it through sadness. Depression doesn't mean that you're necessarily having suicidal thoughts or that you're just sad all the time or or this or that or like and depression don't mean that you can't smile or that you can't laugh at a joke. <laughs> People be like, oh yeah, I'm depressed. So I, I can't laugh or smile or I can't have fun or, or nothing like that. Like people you see, you might walk by somebody that's having the best time of their life that it seems like to you, and on the inside, they could be depressed. So you you just never know. So unless you ask, you're not going to get the answer. So just make it, it be the funniest people. Yes, indeed. Me, class clown, running around making jokes. Whole time I'm angry. <laughs> like It'd be like that. So just making sure that like you really ask those questions. When you see somebody displaying like behaviors of one specific emotion a whole lot, even if somebody like real quiet, they could be experiencing mental health issues just because they're not talking. Or if you see somebody being like just overly like talkative or just like always wanting to talk to people and things like that, that person might not be getting enough attention at home and it's really been taking a toll on them. So they feel a need to, you know, talk to everybody else because they're being ignored at home. So all those things, you know, really do like play a big part in how you learn as well. So if you're not feeling the best or your mental health is just like all over the place or it's just not really in the right spot for you to be able to function and actually intake, you know, that lesson plan or whatever you learned in school that day. It it, it can be hard. And if your teacher, like like said, was saying is just like disregarding, it's just like, oh, well, you're, you're going to do my work because this is my class and I'm a teacher and you're a student, so you need to do the work. It's just like, okay, <laughs> it kind of makes you not want to do it or it adds even more stress to your plate and now your mental health is even worse. So sometimes people are just like making things worse for others without even knowing it. So just always making sure that you're, you're empathizing and being aware of everybody's like mental health status is like really important. I know like my math teacher, she does like little check-ins you like every class throughout the class, like after we finished the notes, she'd be like, how was it? Was it too much? Was it enough? Did y'all understand it? Anybody got questions? Do y'all feel stressed? This is, is this lesson stressing y'all out? Like, let me know. So kind of like those little checkpoints throughout the way and during the class period. I just, I don't want to fill out a Google form at the end of the quarter asking about how I felt September 1st. I don't know how I felt September 1st. I didn't experience a thousand other different traumatic things two weeks after that. I don't know. So kind of like those, those daily day-to-day -day check ins asking how your class is doing. I can't stand teachers who don't say good morning and ask like how your day was or nothing like that. Like that just it's just like <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you ask if I'm okay? Like I was just crying in second period. <laughs> you want me to do trick functions. Like it just some things like really just kind of just taking it those short and like meaningful check ins and just just those short meaningful check-ins like whether it's just asking somebody is okay those all like are very helpful asking somebody to hug or if y'all need a five minute break just to kind of like you know decompress for a second before y'all start class or something like that all of that can make a difference in how much your students actually learn in your class so taking that all into consideration just makes a bigger difference yeah i definitely agree jim and also, like, I've witnessed and I've noticed that now, since we came back from the pandemic, the school has changed a lot. Well, I'm, maybe not the school, but the teachers itself have changed a lot about the structure of their class. Like, they've been way more lenient and loose. And not loose in a bad way, but, like, loose with, like, certain things, like the dress code or the phone policy and things like that. Like, I know for my physics teacher, like the one Gemma was talking about, um, he is very, very lenient, like, with pretty much a lot of stuff like he's how did he explain this he explained this to us he said i feel like if we give the students you know the options and we give them the resources and just trust them enough to do what they're supposed to do 
then, you know, they will do what they're supposed to do. They will respect it. So, you know, instead of him being all like, put your phone away in the middle of class and no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that. You don't say none of that. If you pull your phone out in the middle of him teaching his lesson, you're not going to stop the class and say, put your phone away. He's going to let you do it. You know, because after a while, after you know your phone for a while, I was like, all right, like, you know, ain't nothing else going to Let me put it back down. I just needed that quick break now. I can focus back on class, you know. But he he's not putting nobody down in the middle of class or embarrassing nobody telling him to get off the phone. For the bathroom policy, he we don't got to stop class and be like, can I go to the bathroom? No, you can't go. Somebody's already out. We don't even got to ask. He said, go ahead, use the bathroom. Just walk out whenever you need to go. You're human. You shouldn't have to ask to use the bathroom. I just want, I'm just trusting you to come back and not roam the halls and do whatever. So, you know, whenever we need to go or take a, a break or a walk, we just leave. We just walk out. It's just things like that that just make a huge difference. And it makes us feel like, you know, we're in control and we have a say in our, in our mental health and what it is that we need at the moment. You know, so stuff like that makes a huge, huge difference, especially when you're learning, like, just maybe to have those different options. And especially since they developed the new 90-minute class period, the class not normal. The class is no longer like 30 minutes, so it's not like you sit there and do the warm-up and they go over the warm-up and, and the stuff is over now. We got to sit there. We can go through, like, two lesson plans in one class. Like, it's ridiculous. So just incorporating those breaks, like Jenna mentioned, just the mental health check-ins. Some of my teachers be like, all right, you know, we're going to check back in. Sometimes, I think sometimes teachers be giving, like, a little more work to like, I mean, not a little more, a little more time to work on work that's not really needed because they know we're going to chill up, chill a little bit afterwards. And when they realize that we've been chilling a lot, then they'll pull the group, the class back together. And my architecture, my architecture, uh, my architecture's class um, teacher, he was basically like, yeah, you know, go ahead, work on your warm up or whatever. He'll give us like 15 minutes for warm up. Warm up be like one question long. And after everybody been sitting around talking for the past 10 minutes, he's like, well, I can see that nobody's going to warm up no more. Do anybody want to share? You know, so stuff like that. Like, don't be too on everybody's tails. Like, give us that break. Give us that time to just, you know, decompress. Like, we go through a lot of things throughout the day. Um, it'd be a long school day. I can say that. From having to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and have them stay at school till 3 o'clock p.m. And then, like, some students don't go straight home after school. They be having to take light rails and subways home and things like that. Like, we need that time throughout the day to just sit there and breathe. Like, you'd be surprised how many students don't get that, especially students who have different um, home situations. Like, sometimes school is the only place that people have. That's why the pandemic impacted a lot of people, because people don't have time at home to sit and breathe and have some some them time so they look forward to those little five minute breaks you let them use their phone and just sit there without having to worry about something else or you know just 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 sit there and be a kid you know so i ain't gonna lie though i be telling i be telling um teachers like i feel like they should have never took recess away like who said take away recess once we got to the the, the, the third grade we we need recess like we need that time to sit there and go outside and get a fresh a, a breath of fresh air and, and just chill, okay? Like, I don't understand why recess got an age to it, but that could just be me. But, um, yeah, I think I, um, I didn't talk about everything for the past 10 minutes, but. I guess, <laughs> no, I guess they feel like, they like, y'all got that quality, <laughs> that quality y'all recess time. Like, I guess they feel like that, but the, the quality is like a really, like, a really good thing. And I know all schools don't have it, but I feel like it's, it's like really smart because it's like, we kind of like got that sense of like freedom or just like, separate is from the school like we know we still like on school grounds and because the way like Polly and Weston built the court is like Polly and Weston is like it's like it's like two L's like put together to form a square if y'all know what I mean and Weston is one of the L's and Polly's one of the L's and then like in the middle of that is the quad so it's just kind of like the perfect like little atmosphere like Yes, it's a part of the school, but it's also like our own like little free space. Like the homeowners be out there, but they honestly do not be paying us no attention. As long as you're not fighting, they don't care what you're doing out there. So it's definitely like our free space. You can eat, you can chill. Like it's definitely uh, our free space. And I think like a lot of more schools should have it. Of course, like we don't go out there when it's raining or snowing or nothing like that. But it's still just like always kind of an option if you want to. If you need to like go through a little walk or something like that. It's always an option. So I think that's like really good that Polly and Weston had that. But another thing that Sid said was like that trust <laughs> that our physics teacher always talking about. And I think it's like the same thing as respect is that, you know, respect is earned. And, you know, you respect me, so I'm going to respect you. You know, respect is given. You receive it, all, all of that. So I think the same thing applies with trust. Like if the School system don't put no trust in us. We're not going to put no trust in them. And, it's, and if it's just no trust, it's just like we're just looking at each other and, and, and nobody's going anywhere. We're not meeting each other in the middle because they all way over here and we all way over here. So it's just like it's just kind of like 
everybody's like stuck. So definitely building that that trust within the students and within the staff and the the school system and all that is like really important or it's just kind of like purposeless. Because <laughs> if, if I don't trust the, the, the teachers, I'm not gonna want to learn from them because I don't trust nothing they're saying. <laughs> maybe the teacher lied about something or maybe the teacher has just never been proved like trust trustworthy really. Like they've been fake can about my mental health. They don't really care about it or something like that. So definitely like instilling that trust within your students is like a big like bond and relationship um, builder. If I can trust you as a teacher and you can trust me as a student, boom, we're best friends till the end. Like that, that that's all it's take because we're going to have that respect and we're going to have that trust. And then it's like, boom, that's a bond right there. That's, that's literally all it takes. That's 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 all it takes. Like my Spanish teacher that I had my freshman year, I was on that lady phone playing games because we had a bond like that. <laughs> we had a bond like that. I love her daughter. Like we had a bond like that. That that that's 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 my girl. So having those bonds like that with your teachers like really shows like how much you know teachers actually play a part in students' lives. Like I love my teachers. They're like second parents slash third parents and all of that. Especially, especially uh, y'all know the young ones. The old ones be fun too, though. Like Mr. Headley. And <laughs> Mr. Headley is, he's a laugh. I can tell you that. But definitely, like, those, those teachers, they, they definitely do do a lot for us. And they impact our lives a lot. Teachers from middle school that I'm still in contact with and all of that. Like, teachers really do have a big impact on students and them leaving their mark on certain students in a positive way <laughs> is like the best thing in the world that you know that it's like your students love you and that they remember you for all the good things and all of that stuff. And I feel like it was something else I had to say, but of course I lost it. So <laughs> I'm trying to get it back, but I cannot think about it. So saying, go ahead and say something while I gather my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, y'all, but, um, we wrapping up close to time anyways, but I really, really love this conversation. And I really hope it reached somebody, at least one instructor out here that need us for this conversation. Because all it takes is one. So, you know, long story short, everybody needs to be more intentional when it comes to students in school and students, period. Like, you never know what somebody's going through. You don't know everybody's background. One thing don't work for every student, okay? Like, stop thinking that we all one person because we're not. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but that, that just goes to show, like, it just needs to be a lot more effort put in when dealing with students and making sure that their mental health is, you know, catered to. And I just thought about this post that is hilarious, and I might get it wrong, but I've seen it because I, I had to repost it because it was, like, so relatable. It said, um, what did it say? It says, it says something like, putting my mental health before my education is good for my mental health until it starts to affect my education, which starts to affect my mental health. That is the truth. You cannot get out of it. Like, if our mental health is not right, then our education not going to be right. Y'all, them grades, it's going to show in them grades. But then when them grades start not to look right, then you start stressing over them grades, your mental health won't start to decline. Like, it just, it's a slippery slope. So that just goes to show how those two things are really tied and connected. Like some people don't really believe in mental health. So some teachers might not really have that in their mind at all when it comes to teaching students. They just like, listen, I just get paid to teach this lesson. Whatever these kids do and decide to do after this class is up to them. I don't know what they got going on, but that ain't up to me. You know, I hope it gets better. It'll get better, whatever. But like, listen, you just here to learn what I'm going to teach in this 90 minutes. You know, but I really hope that a lot of teachers get out that mindset because it's not going to help anybody or anything in the long run and they're wasting their time and we're wasting our time so just we just need more intentional teachers and practices but you found it jim no i still didn't oh i think it was just uh addressing a comment in the chat about um somebody said that their principal uh wanted to join so it's not a link she would just have to come on to the youtube and then type in host miles md and then find a live that's how it was i don't think we was giving out the the link tonight so that was that, but teachers were just supposed to be like being in the chat and stuff like that. But it's our last five minutes anyway. But definitely saying uh our thank yous to your uh your principal, of course. But I know Naeem said that that's crazy because had the whole monitors be yelling, get out my hallway, you can't be in the hallway, da, 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 getting water at the time. I our monitors they be yelling too, but it's not in a like a malicious or like hateful way. Like they're like real, like playful, but not like too like two playful ways like bro creepy and weird. 
But like they they be yelling too, like, you know, get the that's what they're there for. They're supposed to monitor the hallway. So they're supposed to make sure that y'all in class, you know, they're supposed to say get out the hallway and all of that. But like if they send it in a way that's like, I don't know, you you know how you can tell when somebody's saying something like in a way that's like not like like they don't care, like they're really being like genuinely mean. I can see like how you could be taking it the wrong way, but like I know our hall monitors at Poly, we only got two. Some of like I'll I forgot what it is, but like <laughs> the lady doesn't like keep in check of like like uniforms and stuff like that. Every, everybody, she she's not everybody favorite. So certain people like that, I just think they just have a different way of showing their love. Like Miss Joni. Y'all know, y'all know Miss Joni do her cuss outs and all of that. Y'all, y'all know it'd be that tough love. So sometimes everybody is different. Some teachers might joke with you. Some of them might be, you know, they might just show that tough love, which is which is a little like they not gonna cut you no slack for real because they expect you to be this way and they you know you should be that way and they know you should be that way. So they just like, yeah, it's it's just not no slack. I say what I say, so so you know, get it, get it done. So definitely, but like hall monitors should be, I feel like all hall monitors should be like borderline comedians. Cause if you're not funny, <laughs> in the hallway like make a joke and make me go like i feel like hall monitors they like they supposed to be fun they're supposed to be a little bit younger than like most of the administration you know, they're supposed to be like the cool people or whatever you know of course you know they they gonna you know have that, that look the hall monitors just supposed to be cool like overall it's always gonna be like that one like hall monitor that you gotta run from or something like that but the hall monitor should overall like they should be like really cool that's like people who you build bonds with too at the school so that's just another thing. And building those bonds with those teachers, uh, like Cam said, uh, early on when we first started, it definitely helped with, like, your grades and stuff. So having that, uh, that effective and transparent bond also helped with communication. So them helping with communication, help with your grades, and helping with your grades, help with your mental health. So all of that can, can just make things go a lot better for you and a lot smoother. And also, like, Maybe if you have a teacher that's like teaching a subject that's you don't like the way they're teaching it, go to another teacher that you are cool with or something. Maybe they can direct you to somebody else who teach that same subject who can help you out. So this is not always look and like explore your options. Maybe you meet different teachers that's not just your teachers or whatever. Like I know plenty of teachers that's not my teachers or never have been my teachers or never gonna be my teachers because I'm not taking a specific course or something like that. So Definitely making sure, like, you're branching out, meeting different teachers and getting those different bonds can help you, like, a long way. So just making sure that you build a full connection. That's, like, one of the best places to touch your networking as well. All right, Jim, you already know it's 7.57, so you're only going to come on here cutting us off at any second. So, um... Yeah, I'm not going to talk your head off anymore. I'm sure Ms. Journey will want to close out. I, I'm all jeweled out. I didn't drop so many jewels this session. I didn't, we, me and Jimmy, they both provided um, these instructors with so many different helpful tips. We didn't have such an amazing and productive conversation. So, I mean, unless Jim has anything else to add on, Ms. Joni, you can come back on here and close us out. And it was really nice talking to y'all. I don't think we're going to be on here next Wednesday. Ms. Joni will be getting that one, but we enjoy having this conversation. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely all drooled out. I ain't even really out of y'all. So I definitely got homework to do. Love y'all. Have a good rest of your night. Have a good day tomorrow. I don't know if Miss Johnny gonna close out here because I know she said like she was doing something else. So I don't know. But we're gonna leave. Love y'all. See y'all later. No uh higher session at the winning Wednesdays. This Wednesday, this was the higher session. So whatever ain't make it. Oh well. Uh, we we get y'all on the third Wednesday with the uh line with higher session. So no higher session this Wednesday, but we'll see y'all next time. Love y'all, and please repost the IGTV that's on the Healing Youth Alliance page. <laughs>